Let's officially start without further ado, using options on ETFs to find an edge in today's markets. Well, that is a mouthful. Um, as I said, a few things right up front. Number one, uh, this is a risk disclosure. We're not financial advisors or a broker dealer. And the reason I mentioned that, and of course, no flash photography. I love that one at the bottom. No photography. You know, don't take pictures of the monkeys, apparently. There's also a copyright uh, disclaimer in here. Um, that says don't reproduce this we can reproduce this we will reproduce this and of course hand you the recording but if you want to reproduce it you have to have the consent of Theo trade and the National Football League again introducing myself my name is Don Kaufman co-founder here at Theo trade the reason I threw the first risk disclosure up there about the broker dealer is I spent a large portion of my career at, at the time was a startup firm called Thinkorswim, so I went and uh, started trading in Chicago at a ripe old age of 22, uh, and uh, at 22 is, you know, late 90s, obviously the internet boom, pretty exciting time to trade, but uh, oh, about two years after I was uh, trading in Chicago, I got an invite to a uh, unknown startup. And at a whopping 24 years old, it sounded like a uh, you know pretty good experience over there. So that company happened to be Thinkorswim. I went through there, and uh, ultimately I ran the education. I actually built the education division originally for uh, for Thinkorswim. Uh, remained there during the career. And we went and took the company public. Was eventually acquired by TD Ameritrade. I ended up running the education for the seven million clients of TD Ameritrade, which was. It was an interesting time because we got to obviously study, you know, many of the clients over there, and I'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, I've done the uh, the CNBC tour. Everybody always, you know, questions. Have hey, you been on CNBC? Yes. Okay. And if you're going to be on CNBC, that's the guy you want to be pitted against. It's a love hate relationship. You have to love to hate him. A um, little bit about Theo Trade. <clears throat> so, what do we do? Like, I mean, if this is the first time you guys have never heard of a Theo Trade, you just, you know, get an invitation to come to a webcast. We specialize in educations for really stocks, options, futures. Um, I don't necessarily per se have a specialty. People always ask you, you know, you specialize. Listen, if you trade, in the end, in the end, you're going to buy something, you're going to sell something. Whether it's a stock, whether it's an option, whether it's a futures contract, you know, people try to differentiate. But in the end, you remember where you kind of come from. Pretty much you're going to buy it or you're going to sell it, right? <clears throat> so... Theo Trades actually founded by professional traders, and each and every one of our instructors and trading educators have a minimum of 15 years of experience. Uh, again, I'm 19 years into the business, but a couple of our instructors here have a few decades of experience. And really, kind of our mantra at Theo Trade is to help you mitigate risks in the market. And of course, the skill set learn you you know that you'll learn. Uh, even tonight, it's going to last a lifetime. I'm going to change the way you think about markets here uh, momentarily. More importantly than uh, than what is a Theo trade, who is Theo trade? So, you know, there's a lot of different places. Obviously, you can go for for market education and so forth. And what we do here at Theo trade is we've built a pretty formidable team. So, if you've ever heard of Doc Severson, uh, stocks, options, technicals, he's for the most part our engineering brain, I kind of call Doc the engineering brain here at Theotrade. Uh, Doc has been in the industry quite a long time. Anybody heard of Doc? Starting with Doc Severson. Next, Jeff Bierman. Jeff actually worked with me both at Thinkorswim and TD Ameritrade. Jeff uh, took the title, Chief Market Technician. So Jeff is better known as, how do I say this eloquently? He's our chart geek here at Theotrade. Um, I, I will say this, and without hesitation, I don't know anybody that knows more about charts and more about technical studies than Jeff Bierman. Uh, he'd be hard pressed to find anybody. That's actually why TD Ameritrade promoted him to chief market technician before um, he's eventually, you know, joined us here at Theotrade. Next on the list, okay, undoubtedly heard of him, Steve Slim Miller, 43 year career. I met uh, Slimmy when I was a kid. Uh, literally 22 years old, trading in Chicago, and I met uh, Steve Miller. Steve is actually heavy into cyclical analysis. So for those of you that understand a little bit about cyclical analysis, that's his kind of mantra. Then last, but definitely not least, we do have 
a intraday strategist, and he likes to specialize in NASDAQ futures, but it's Tony Rago. Uh, Tony's actually been trading NASDAQ futures pretty much since NASDAQ futures have been trading. And that's, that's a little bit about who is Theotrade, so I like to give everybody some background. Next, what you're going to learn in this presentation. So <clears throat> I'll go through this, but really want to teach you one strategy that you can implement with ETFs that can really produce results even in the most horrific market conditions and we're going to talk a lot about finding statistical advantages in markets because I'm going to tell you right now okay markets are incredibly efficient and for those of you that have traded and by the way this is these are not rhetorical questions so I mean we literally have now over a thousand people that are joining us tonight. These aren't rhetorical questions, you know, jump in over here. How many people realize what, what that statement even means? Like when I say, you know, markets are really efficient, it's, you know, when you're starting to look for statistical advantages, harder and harder to find those. So you have to learn how to exploit edge, and that's a little bit of what I'm going to show you this evening. So we're going to use ETF options markets and liquidity to your advantage. So the deeper the liquidity, when you think about options and markets, what's liquidity? Volume out there. All right, liquidity is big, huge, and uh, we're going to discover how you can sell premium in the lowest volatility without taking extraordinary risks. Now, this is an interesting one. Sell premium. Now, some of you have absolutely no idea. Listen, if you've never had any experience with these ideas, that's what you're here for tonight. Find out how far markets can move within a given period of time and learn to profit from unexpected and unanticipated risks. So... We're going to show you tonight a lot about, well, there's not a huge amount of volatility in markets. So we're going to look at, you know, some of the most docile markets, what they might offer. So let's get into it. And again, before I go any further, you know, I, I want everybody to know is, and, and again, I, I obviously, you know, I often put this slide in here, but what you're going to learn tonight is a skill set, okay? I'm not, I'm not going to offer you like following the bouncing ball and show you a chart pattern with red and green flashing arrows. I hope that all of us are beyond that and realize that technology has surpassed, you know, a lot of what people look at and stare at charts all day. Now, I am, I'm actually going to share some data with you that, that I actually drew onto a chart so that you'd understand the data a little bit better. Nevertheless, what we cover tonight is a skill set, okay? This is not going to be instant coffee and instant tea. And I, I always say this because people want to basically follow a system and just be told what to do and be like, here, this is, this is how you're going to make money. And Okay, listen, it's not instant coffee, instant tea. If you want to be in this business, you are going to have to learn something, and it is a skill set, and this is based on statistical data. Again, that's something we put right up front, and I'm going to challenge you tonight, so you better be aware of that right up front. Also, you know, this is not going to be like, you know, engineering mathematics degree kind of stuff. However, okay, we're going to have to understand some basic concepts be off and running over here. Let's get to it. First, let's start with how far and when. It's a good question. How far and when? Now, if I could help you learn how far a marketplace or a stock was likely to move within a given period of time, would this be helpful? Meaning that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start with and preface the discussion with, I might not be able to tell you if we're going to go up or we're going to go down, but I can tell you with an incredible degree of certainty how far we can move within a given period of time. <clears throat> Is that ultimately helpful? Okay, And what I'm actually referencing, and many of you, if you've tuned in to really any of the sessions that I've ever done, and by the way, there's no, you know, again, you don't have to have, you know, a background knowledge of what Don Kaufman has done or background knowledge of Theotrade over here. I talk extensively about expected moves and, more importantly, what I call what to expect with expected moves first. For the direction we are headed today, it is imperative that I recap a bit about expected moves. So even the most experienced people, okay, tune in, turn on. First, let's start with this. What are expected moves? What is an expected move? This is the way that an expected move plays out. Now, hang on a minute as I show this because there's a lot going on in this slide. It looks pretty easy, right? And you're like, oh, well, you know, uh, you got something over here. Listen, 
it's a stock and the stock is trading right smack at a hundred and if you understand okay a little bit about pricing and this is exactly what I'm going to talk about in a moment if you understand a little bit about pricing I can't necessarily tell you if the stock is going to go up or if the stock is going to go down. Now, here's the irony. Everybody in this business wants to tell you where the markets are going to go. Turn on CNBC. You're, you know, it's, well, I think we're going to go up. I think we're going to go up. Listen, a, the blind monkey throwing darts right now is doing well because <laughs> the blind monkey throwing darts. By the way, there was actually a study that was done all the way back in the late 90s where there was a chimp and the chimp's name was Raven the Chimp and they put finger like paint and anywhere the, the monkey touched in the newspaper they picked those stocks and that portfolio outperformed the mutual fund managers. Anyway, I always say the blind monkey throwing darts right now could perform well because the market's put a one direction to the upside. Now, all I'm trying to elaborate on here is Okay. If you understand a little bit about expected moves, it doesn't tell you, does not tell you if we're going to go up or we're going to go down, but it can tell you how far okay, the market can move within a given period of time. And what I'm going to show you here momentarily is specifically how this works. Okay. And again, it doesn't you know, say that we're always going to move between 90 and 110. All right. And, and again, it gives you specifically a time frame in this case 90 days and it says hey between we're going to be between 90 and 110 we're going to be in that range approximately 68 percent of the time and i asked you a question does that help you and you, you might question like where's the 68 coming from don't worry we're going to get there so continuing on over here again what to expect with expected moves all right options markets can be thought of as putting a price tag on risk. Now, let's do a timeout for just a second there. Option markets. Now, there's going to be people that are joining us this evening and have no idea what an option is. Okay? They've never wanted to trade an option. They have nothing to do with options. It's okay. Again, I said the O word, right? I said option markets. What options markets really do is that just that. They put a price tag on risk. So, if you have a stock at 100, right, and somebody thinks that that stock can go up to 105, the options market okay, is going to price that effectively. On the flip side, somebody might think the market's not going to go from 100 to 105. They might think the stock is going to go from 100 down to 95. Okay? And that's going to help price the options market. So pricing in markets is determined via market participants. Now, I know a lot of people like that, uh, that get really involved in options and just out of curiosity. Yeah, curiosity here. How many of you do have some experience with options? Even mild experience with options. All right. Okay. Oh wow, I'm flooded with yeses. Okay. Let's let's do the opposite. Anybody here brand new to options? Never seen an option? Never talked about an option? Never even thought about talking about an option? Huh? It's fair because I I like to know. You know, you gotta know what we're doing over here. Oh, James is brand new. James, you're my man. Come on. Admitting it's the first step. I've had, you know, 200 people said, yes, I've had experience with options. Uh, two people have said no. So um, I'm pretty sure of the number of people we have on here that, uh, again, some, some of you might not be telling the truth. Anyway, what I want you to know is ultimately, like options pricing, it comes down to supply and demand. You know, people will talk about the Black-Scholes model, and what, what is that? It's like this crazy mathematic model. And when I first grew up in this business, that was my specialty, options modeling and volatility. And it, it, it was craziness, you know? Today, it's just supply and demand. It's what somebody's willing to pay for. That's how an option is priced, because that's what volatility is. So, and competition actually breeds efficiency in pricing. Now, that's a kind of a complicated thought. Competition breeds efficiency in pricing. The heck does that mean? Basically means the more participants and the more exchanges, it makes pricing more efficient. Does that make sense? Because right now, there's approximately 13 options exchanges in operation. Things are pretty efficient, right? 13 different option markets making markets an apple. It's crazy. So expected move, though, has no directional bias. In the aforementioned slide here, the chances of us going up to 110 were identical to the chances of us going down 90. Just wanted to throw that one out there. So expected moves are based purely on implied volatility, which is supply and demand. And I'm going to show you this again and again. However, 
you have to recognize implied volatility. Now, implied volatility, it's a big word. It's a very, very big word. But implied volatility, what it really is, it's supply and demand. Again, recognize that supply and demand is based on live markets, whereby there are often hundreds of millions, even billions of dollars, setting the volatility in options and the expected move. So how can all of this help you? This, this is where the rubber kind of needs to meet the road over here. And uh, the answer is, here's a stock, and the stock is trading right at 100. Now, even if you're brand new and you have never traded an option in your life, that's okay. Okay, and we're going to throw some couple complicated topics at you. Is that all right tonight? Again, I, I warned you a little bit. So I will explain all the numbers here momentarily. So here's a stock, and the stock is trading right at 100. And it has what we're calling a 20% implied volatility. Now, let me relate this to something that I think all of you would be familiar with, the VIX. What's the VIX? It's the S&P 500 Volatility Index. You know, everybody talks about the VIX. Very few people know what the VIX even is. Okay? Uh, again, I, I can't reiterate this enough. Everybody likes to talk about the VIX. Very few people know what it is. If this were the VIX, the VIX being 20%, what that really means is here's a stock with a 20% volatility. What it translates to is what they call standard deviation. And you're like, I, I don't even know what standard deviation is. Like, come on, math geek. Um, you know, and again, I'm not a math geek, but it's standard deviation, and that, that always freaks everybody else out. So what it basically means is a really simple idea. It means the stock can go from 80 to 120. That's it. 20% vol equates to approximately a $20 move, either up or down. That's what expected move is. And it'll stay in that range approximately 68% of the time. Now, time out, time out. That's good for one year. So I may not be able to tell you if the stock is going to go up or down. And I'm going to show you how this can actually help everybody out as we go along over here. But understanding conceptually what this means is a big idea because you can immediately start to discern what your risk is. You know, if you bought a $100 stock, if you bought this stock at 100 and you know that it's a 68% chance of being up or down 20 bucks, Okay, that can actually help you allocate capital. Like how much are you going to risk? Okay? But then you might be trading a stock like Tesla. Tesla moves 20 bucks in a day. You're going to feel very, very differently about it, correct? Because the volatility in Tesla isn't 20%. It's more. Why? Because the stock's got more risk. All right. So with this example, this is good, again, for one year. Now, with some quick math, you could actually divide this. You could divide it ultimately by what? By 12. You could divide it by 12, which instead of giving you what the expected move was for a year, I could actually give you the expected move for a month. I could even divide that further. I could give you expected moves for a week. Heck, I could even take it down to one day of time. It's just math. Okay? And all of that's done for you. Like you don't have to be like a math geek to figure this stuff out. So now you can actually start to pinpoint how far stocks can move. Now, the other question that comes up on this slide, and I've been using this slide, you know, for, for almost two decades, but 68%. You're like, what's 68%? That's what one standard deviation happens to be. That's what one standard deviation is. And what that ultimately means is 68% of the time, but immediately, immediately, what you should think to yourself is, What's going to happen to me out here? And what's going to happen to me out here? What's, what's happening 16% of the time out here and 16% of the time out here? Because if we stay in here 68% of the time, then 32% of the time we're going to be outside that zone. Right? Everybody okay at this point? Deep breaths. Because this is about as bad as it gets from the math standpoint. And all I wanted to do was just, I wanted to take something tangible like implied volatility and people you can look at implied volatility on 50 different underlyings but you know tonight 
tonight we're talking about ETFs, you know, and with ETFs, and I'm just going to bring this up for just a second. Here's, here's the XLE, okay, and in the XLE, what is it? And again, I'm, I'm going to freeze my screen here for a second because I saw it blinking. So in the XLE, it's got about a 19% implied volatility, which is not too different from this particular underlying. Now, once you know the volatility, then we can tell you how far a stock can move within a given period of time. And that's, that's the key point that I want to make right up front. So everybody okay? Huh? Yeah? All right. Continuing on then. Expected moves and probability, just to define. Expected moves defines a one standard deviation at 68.3% of the time in a given underlying. Therefore, there's a 68% chance or 68% probability of an underlying closing inside of the expected move by a designated expiration. Okay? Expected move is a probability of expiring inside a given range by a specified date. Now, all these concepts just break down to one really, really simple idea. You give me a stock, I can tell you how far it's going to move into the given period of time. And it's very, very easy. You could say like, hey, if this was 30% implied volatility on a $100 stock, okay, that means within one year that stock can move up to what? 130 or all the way down to about 70. It's going to stay in that range approximately 68% of the time. And then we're going to start to learn how to build some trades off this idea. Now, okay, let's continue on a little bit further. These expected moves, okay, they're available on a lot of the trading applications these days. Now, on a day-to-day -day basis, I do use a TD Ameritrade trading application still. I still use Thinkorswim. The reason is, well, I have 17 years of experience on Thinkorswim. But if you do not have Thinkorswim, okay, it's okay. Here is a shortcut to expected move. You could just add the at the money call to any at the money put. Again, I don't want people tonight, don't get caught up in the option side of it just yet. Don't get caught up in the little nuances of add the calls to the puts to calculate expected move. Okay? That stuff is easy. That stuff, you can follow this slide deck even a year from now and be able to figure that out. Okay? What we really want to get into isn't all the minutia behind expected move. What we want to get into all right, is this how to use this, okay? This expected move can be, phenomenal is an understatement of a resource. And I'm going to show you a few examples of why expected move is so incredibly important. Why, if, if you're trading, and again, you might think to yourself, I'm never going to trade options, Don. I don't need this expected move stuff. But you do. You absolutely do. Everybody needs to understand this to be involved in a stock, in an option, even in a futures contract. If you don't understand expected move, you're missing one of the biggest pieces of the puzzle of this marketplace. Okay? Again, you're like, we're going to talk about in a moment selling options outside the expected move can instantly create a viable trade candidate. Again, I'm going to provide an example, but bear with me for a moment. This is nothing more than a distribution curve, okay? And the reason I'm going to bring up this distribution curve is we're going to use an age-old example I like to do. And anytime I do an example, I always call the stock, stock, all right? So this is a stock, and the stock, let's say, let's just call it a stock trading at 100. Now, I'm going to use some theoretical examples. And then I'm going to use some quite literal examples. Here's a stock, and the stock right now is trading at 100. And you're able to figure out, just by looking either at think or swim, or you figure out what the straddle is, you find out that this stock has an expected move. Okay, we're going to call the expected move an EM. And the EM, okay, for one week. That's it. An EM for one week 
is equivalent to what we're going to say is plus or minus five dollars. That's it. So stop right there. Think about this for a second. The expected move for one week is five dollars. That means this stock is supposed to go up to 105 or down to about 95 and it's supposed to stay in that range approximately 68 percent of the time. Now, how many different ways could you use this? Think about it. Let's say that you never had anything to do with options, that the expected move came from the options market, but you never had anything to do with the options. You don't even know what an option is. I'm going to tell you exactly how this would work. You might even be trading intraday. I'm going to tell you right now, you better keep your stop order away from 95 because a pretty high probability that we're going to hit that 95, am I right? Think about all the different variances that you could use for this. You know, if you're using stop orders, whatever your strategy haps to, happens to be, okay? And yeah, somebody asked, can you use this for currency futures? Of course you can. This can tr expected move translates to every liquid product. Liquid is important. Liquid, liquid, liquid. What does the word liquid mean? It means something that actually trades, okay? But I wanted to throw this at you just real quick because I just want you to understand this general concept. Now, blank the screen for a second. Again, I could give you legitimately 50 different reasons that you have to understand this. So let's go back to the exact same stock and let's do it again. So here's the exact same stock and it's trading right at 100. Now, let's give you a different type of strategy. Now, for those of you that do have some options experience, great. Here's the stock at 100. We know that the EM is equivalent to plus or minus five bucks. That's the expected move. And how long is that good for? That's good for one week. And it's only a hundred dollar stock with a five dollar expected move. I mean, this stock can move a little bit. It's, it's got some volatility to it. So let's say again, the stock can come down here. Okay. Can come down to 95. It's supposed to go up to about 105. It's currently trading right here at a hundred. Now, what is one of the most commonplace option strategies that is employed and deployed around this? Well, what some people will do is a very, very simple idea. They're going to come in here and I'm going to show you. They're actually going to sell options just outside this. They're going to say, right, what, 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 what? We're supposed to stay in this range. So I'm going to go out here and I'm going to sell. Okay, in this case, we're going to call it a 106 call. And then I'm also going to sell, okay, in this case, a 94 put. Now, this age-old strategy, all you're basically doing is selling a 94 put, selling a 106 call. What that basically does, you're like, wait, I never even owned a 106 call. You don't have to own it to sell it. A 106 call would obligate you to give somebody stock at 106. Scary, right? That's why you're going to go out there at the same time and you're going to buy, okay, a what? A 108 call. Somebody has the right to take stock from you at 106, but you have the right to take stock from somebody else at 108. Think about that for a second. How much could you lose here? Well, if you sell this, okay, and then buy this, you could actually lose the difference between 106 and 108. In this particular case, how much could you lose? You could lose as much as $2, but you're going to collect something because you sold those 106s. Now, okay, on the, on the flip side here, you sold the 94 put. You're going to turn around and you're going to buy, okay, a 92 put. Now, this, this looks complicated, but it's really not. It's why, I mean, people try to make this so complicated. This is called a what? Iron condor. You can look up what an iron condor is. You can, there's going to be, there's legitimately going to be a thousand plus sites, be 10,000 sites with telling you what an iron condor is. Everybody can tell you what an iron condor is. The only problem is you ain't going to be profitable doing an iron condor. I don't care. I don't care who you are right now. They don't work. But, all right, if you had the right expected move data, might. We're going to talk about this a little bit tonight. So this iron condor, you're probably doing it somewhere like, again, you're going to sell this put spread, you're going to sell this call spread, and this is where people get all like, oh, I'm so complicated, there's four different things I have to trade. 
in the end, in the end, this trade will receive a 70 cent credit and it'll take a dollar thirty of risk. Now again, not to complicate things at all. You're going to collect 70 cents, but you're taking a dollar thirty of risk. Now why would you ever do that? Why would you want to collect a credit of 70 cents, right? But to take a dollar thirty of risk, that's a scary thing. I'll tell you why. Because the trade might have upwards, okay, of a 75% probability of success. Why? Because you're actually selling stuff that is outside this expected move. The expected move has a 68% chance. You're selling even further outside of it. You probably have closer to a 75% probability. And you have to ask yourself, is that, is that worth it? Hopefully, this makes sense. All right, pause here. Time out for a second. Are we okay? Because again, got a lot of people on tonight. I know some people are absolutely brand new. And if you've never seen an iron condor before, I'm throwing some hardcore stuff at you. There's clearly a lot going on on this particular slide. And it's important that we adjust, you know, we have to adjust to, again, everybody's needs in here. So, hey, let me know if you're good. You know, you can hit, yeah, I'm good. All right. No, I'm not good. So, uh, by the way, this is not a uh, this is not an unusual credit. This is a very very routine iron condor, all right? Everybody's good, all right? All right, bring it on. Okay, we're we're getting good. And by the way, if you don't, uh, <laughs> my heart is fluttering. What do I do? I like it. So that, that means I think you like iron condors. Okay. So what we're doing right now is, uh, by the way, I got one eyes glaze over. That's good, Toby. We're on the same page because I'm going to make this even easier for you. So <laughs> um, now, clean this out, okay? Clean, clean the deck. All right. So now we have back to a distribution curve. Remember, what it's as easy as if you think a stock is going to be range bound, what do you do? You sell stuff outside of what's expected. Right? So if you're supposed to be in this range 68% of the time, we're going to sell outside that range and just sit there and pray that we stay range bound. But what's the problem with that? Well, contrary to popular belief, prayer doesn't work very well in the markets, okay? Because somebody's praying we do the opposite of you. Now, range bound index products. Major index products, such as the SPX and the SPY, have displayed the propensity, okay? They've basically displayed, like, they're going to stay within expected moves. Now, what I'm saying here, the spider, what is the spider? It's the S&P 500 ETF. This was, tonight, about ETFs. Premium sellers attach themselves to this notion and they sell options outside of expected moves. Now, okay, here's the really, really good question. As we just went through, this truly is the spy. How many of you have ever tried this on the spider? Okay, and I love this because everybody's there and they're like, again, you know, stay put, stay put, and we're supposed to stay in here, and we're supposed to stay in here, and all of a sudden, the spider, okay, the spider gets evil. It's an evil, evil product, and it goes up here, and then when it's done going up here, and it crushes your heart, and it crushes your soul, then it rips down here, and then it crushes your heart and soul to the downside. Even though we haven't seen the downside in a while, it exists, and the spider is supposed to be docile, and it goes from docile to one angry product after another. This is what we call the life cycle of selling premium, okay? Many of you okay, have likely experienced the following. So you sell premium for three or four months in a row successfully. Maybe you're using an iron condor. Some of you guys actually sell puts, okay? Does the downside exist? I'm with you, man. There is no downside anymore. But this is the life cycle of selling premium. You go out there three, four months in a row, you're like, I'm doing so good. I'm doing so good. But then you even get so comfortable that you start to actually push the envelope of the trade. By the way, 
If you guys are joining us tonight and you've never sold premium before, allow me to save you, okay, not only time, but if somebody tells you to sell premium on products like the Spider, I'm not only going to save you time, you know, part of tonight is I will save you thousands and thousands of dollars. You're going to get comfortable, you're going to add contract size, and smack, that's what the car wreck is down below over here. I love this picture, okay? And what ultimately happens to you when you sell premium over there? Well, one loss exceeds all of your profits. Now, time out for a second. Before I read the rest of this slide, okay, you think I haven't seen this before? Seven million clients, I had access to their accounts. We studied, okay, tens of thousands of active option traders. What do they do? They make money, they make money, they make money, they make money. All of a sudden, pop, they get hit. One loss, it'll exceed everything you made, everything you worked for. Total loss. You're going to give back not only the profits you made, but extending yourself into the red considerably. Come on. And as I said, yeah, I've seen this movie before. If you sell premium in today's efficient market, you're going to pay the ultimate price. Okay? Efficient market prices, you will pay the ultimate price. I cannot make this more clear. No one has any technical indicators that is going to help you okay, sell premium in some kind of efficiency out there. It doesn't exist. And I'm actually going to show you the data. Selling premium can see viable returns within markets. However, large unforeseen moves. By the way, do you know what unforeseen kind of means? It means you ain't going to see it coming. Will likely reverse profitability from premium selling tactics. So the aforementioned strategy can be wonderful, right? You're out there, you're selling premium, you stay in the range, and markets are evil, evil. What do they do? They let you make money, 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 and it's usually the fourth or fifth time when you're like, I'm comfortable, I'm not doing one contract, okay? I'm going to do 10 contracts. It lets you do this. It ropes you in. And then it moves here, only up, never down. Okay? And you just get smoked. And if you've never been through that, is, is somebody just put into the chat, I know. I know that sad story. Okay? I resemble that remark. One loss, though, exceeds all of your profits. Okay? And this, in an efficient marketplace, it's not good. This is not good. There is a solution. The premium selling solution. So in a very efficient market, I went and I've been studying markets and expected moves since the day I've been in the markets. But what we've been doing here, some stuff changed in markets just over a year ago. What stuff? They started adding all of these different weekly options. You know, if you look at the spiders now, there's Wednesday expirations and Friday expirations. It made the market incredibly quantitative. And it, by the way, via using quantitative market data, people get freaked out by the word quantitative. Basically, we measured the crap out of the markets. Every move the market makes, okay, we measure. And we've measured the respective expected moves on an array of different products, okay? So... This is pretty interesting stuff. What we discovered was that certain index products stay inside of expected moves and some products do not adhere to expected moves. Now, I'm going to throw some data at you here momentarily. What this basically means, here's an expected move. We're supposed to stay in here 68% of the time. Okay? Time out. 68% of the time equals one standard deviation. We're supposed to be moving 68% of the time. Has anybody ever stopped and checked this stuff out? Or do you just take it, you know, uh, take it with a grain of salt, or do you just take it as gospel? He said, we'll stay inside one expected move. It doesn't. Markets are fluid. They're fluid, and you have to actually go measure quantitatively how fluid they are. The data set. The data set, and I'm going to give it to you right now if you want it, the SPX spiders. SPX and spiders. Now, I measured the SPX because it's a $2,400 product. It closed inside, okay, 
but within its weekly expected move 11 out of 14 most recent trading weeks. Now, if you do some quick math over there, okay, you know, oh, 11 out of 11 out of uh, 11 out of 14 was 11 out of 14. That's almost 80% of the time. When it did close outside the expected move, though, it was only by a marginal amount, less than 0.2%. The interesting thing about this, okay, is that what you found is just by looking at the most recent 14 weeks in the data, we're supposed to be in this range. 68% of the time. We're not in the range 68% of the time. We're actually in the range close to 80% of the time. And when we did crack outside of it, the margin of error was 0.2%, which means we were like right there, which means the expected move is closer to 85% of the time. Let's look at and share our research and data with you. Now, bear with me for a second. Somebody's already asking about, what about the Qs? What about the NASDAQ? What about this? That's where we're going. Okay. Now, in the most recent 14-week period, time out for a second, I am willing to share the most recent 14-week period with you, but I did run data for over three years on expected moves. The data for three years okay, mirrors the data for the last 14 weeks. Interestingly enough, okay, if you see these expected moves, what these hash marks indicate, and this is like incredibly like ugly to look at, but with these hash marks, and I'm just, I'm going to focus like on just one of these. I just want to show you what they are. Okay. Just look at this that I've just highlighted. This is where the week started. This is the upper end and the lower end. And I'll give you an example. This is roughly plus 20 or minus 20. So we're supposed to move up 20 bucks or down 20 bucks. And we're supposed to stay in that range for the week. So if you count one, two, three, four, five trading days, right? So you look at five trading days, are we inside of the range? Look, we cracked outside over here, but they came soaring back in. People, that, that was just three weeks ago. This is not like, you know, old data. This is like three weeks ago. I calculate expected moves and I talk about them all the time, like every video I do, I do some type of expected move. And here's the interesting thing. When we did crack outside the expected move, like here's a crack on the expected move. When I say a crack, it's a highlighted candle. It was so marginal. It was only, okay, by about four points. That is a four point outside the expected move, which is almost, okay, a margin of error. It's within the margin of error. Right here was the largest breach of expected move and we closed. $10 under the expected move. In the last 14 weeks, this is the only notable period of truly breaching, I would say, statistically the expected move. Now, why is this so important? By the way, we, we closed above the expected move last week. We did it by four points. Four points, that's it. And again, these are margins of error. If you want, again, we're sharing all of this data with you. Those of you that are live right now in the TheoTrade chat room, if you're live in the GoToWebinar, we're sharing the data with you. It gets better. This is the SPX okay, data. So for the most part, three times in the last 14 week period, but I didn't stop there. Then I ran the data in the queues. The queues interested me more than really any of the product. It, it interested me more in like people get into like, hey, did you check this product? Did you check that product? Listen, okay, I'm one person, but we run data sets on tons of different products. But you're going to find out momentarily what we found out here in the queues, in the most recent 14 week period, the queue closed outside the weekly expected move by a wide margin six times. And the interesting thing about the queues they were fully smoking the expected. Like this is the expected move and it cracked up here. Look how far that move was. Here's the upper line, it smoked it. Okay, this one, kind of marginal, but it broke it. All right, the break, when it did breach to the downside, even breached big to the downside. Here, the last two weeks, unbelievable breaches to the upside. There are six data points where we exceeded the expected moves at the end of the week. Okay, so why? Why this? Why all this data? Now again, we'll share everything and anything with you guys, um, because you know it's a proprietary study. No proprietary. There's no sacred cow. If anybody says, "Well, we have a special study," 
they have a special study because they're trying to sell you a special study and give you every piece of data that I have. Okay? There's no sacred cow. The sacred cow is learning how to use this stuff. Now, this is what we call wild versus tame markets. The logic of this trade is rather straightforward, but the application and execution of the strategy must observe the greatest attention to detail and criteria. Detail and criteria. Criteria is just a recipe. It's a step-by-step -step recipe. Well, we're going to show you how to sell premium in products that have a high likelihood of staying inside the expected move. We will also show you how to buy premium in products that have a high likelihood of exceeding the expected move. Now think about this for a second. We're going to show you how to sell options in products that are going to stay inside. And we're going to show you how to buy premium on products that are going to stay outside. We're going to finance your trade. Conclusion. We're going to sell premium to finance the purchase of premium. There's actually, this is getting into the bleeding edge of what huge trading firms are doing. Okay? What you're going to do is sell premium in the spiders. The spiders, it, you could use the spiders, you could use the SPX, but for now, stick with me, the spiders, because the data was the most significant in the spiders and the SPX, and you're going to use that to finance the cost of buying premium in the NASDAQ. Recall, the sale of premium can be dangerous, as unforeseen events can crush a trader at a moment's notice. Oh, but then again, you're buying premium in an alternative product, hoping the big move comes. Now I'm going to give an example of how this works. Okay? Blank, blank the screen over here. Ooh, are we having fun yet? Are we having fun yet? By the way, it's not actually considered a, uh, a pairs trade. It's actually a volatility pairs trade. It's, it's called dispersion. All right? So dispersion is the name of the actual trade that, you know, you can look up dispersion and the mathematics behind it will blow your mind. I have actually taken a complicated trade. I'm going to break it down very, very simplistically for you. So you have one stock and that stock happens to be the spiders, but it doesn't matter. Let's say the stock is trading at a hundred bucks and the stock is supposed to move, okay, up or down five bucks. It's expected move is equivalent to plus or minus five dollars. So we build this trade and the trade that we build, we sell options, okay, and we expect this trade to stay within the given range. Again, we sell, uh, we sell options and we expect to stay within the given range. Now again, the stock is at 100. So anything, if we go what? Up five bucks or what? Down five bucks, we're okay. When we start exceeding that range, we're going to get hurt. But what we're going to do, by the way, we're going to sell this. We're going to also buy a hedge here. We're going to buy a hedge here, and I'll explain it in a little bit more depth, okay? Then what we're going to do simultaneously is on a separate product. That separate product, okay, we're actually going to buy wings. We're going to be buying and buying. Why? This product has actually been shown, okay, that when, when this product, let's call this the SPY, when this product breaks to the upside, this product is going to go extremely far, which means when you do lose on the trade number one, okay, you make more on trade number two. They are in different products, and this totally blows people's minds. But this is what the professional trading arena is doing right now. It's why the NASDAQ continually is exceeding the expected moves. They're laying off volatility in the spiders to buy it in the NASDAQ, okay? And the data supports this in every way, shape, or form. You look at the market today, and you will see that the NASDAQ, all right, go look at the, the Q, Q, Q. What did it do today? It exceeded the range. What did the spiders do today? Rather docile, okay? So if you lose on trade number one, you actually make money 
big time on trade number two. If you make money on trade number one, all right, so if you make money on trade number one, do you lose on trade number two? Yes, but there'll still be some premium that you can exit, and you're not going to take a full loss on trade number two. Okay, this, again, the utmost attention to detail in here to continue on. It's what we're going to call a Theotrade tetrapod spread. For those of you, if you look at it, like, what is a tetrapod? It's evolution. Like as a retail trader, I'm a retail trader. I came from the professional world, but you have to evolve. And if you do not evolve, you die. And guess what? If you sell iron condors right now, you die. This is the type of trade that people are going to have to move into. And the first thing that people look at on here, they go, oh, there's a lot going on over here. <laughs> I mean, there is. There's a lot going on. It's actually a very, very simple trade. I am, uh, I'm selling premium for uh, $1.43. Now, I have no intention of keeping the full $1.43. We're going to keep a percent of the $1.43. But then I'm buying actually an out what they call an outside hedge. I'm actually buying, all right, a strangle. Just outright buying a strangle. So what am I doing? I'm paying 37 cents to hedge a dollar forty-three credit. But the funny thing is this, it's not a direct one for one. There's actually a, a high probability that you can make money on this trade down here, we'll call this trade number two, there's a high probability you could make money in the iron condor and make money on the strangle. Look at the markets lately. The data supports it. The data actually shows that the spiders stayed what? That the spiders stayed in the range, but the queues at the same time cracked outside the range. So we build this tetrapod spread, which is actually a type of volatility arbitrage. What a volatility arbitrage? Arbitrage just means there's not in inefficiency in an individual product. The inefficiency exists between the pair. That the cues, okay, are extending moves above and beyond. Now, people immediately, well, is this going to last forever? Nothing's forever, okay? Nothing's forever. That's why we continue to evolve. The tetrapod spread, though, I've actually found significance between the spiders and the IWM, the spiders and the cues, but I'm going to start to ultimately deviate into other products over time. Again, there's only a couple of us here, and I just cannot stress enough. This is the kind of stuff that people need to learn. Now, I want to show you what's interesting about this. And again, I'm letting you see the trade because I realize that everybody's like, oh, I'm copying this thing down. Don't worry, I'm going to give you the slide deck. You don't have to copy anything down. You don't have to take a lot of notes. We'll give you the slide deck over here. Everything in this trade is attention to detail. The other thing that people are inevitably going to say, what about commissions? You got commissions. This, we provide and have a negotiated commission deal with TD Ameritrade. Not everybody has to have a TD Ameritrade account, but we have a phenomenal negotiated commission cost with TD Ameritrade, okay? We do not mention that live on any session, but I am mentioning it Okay, in passing here, we do have a phenomenal deal with them that makes this trade much more what I would call friendly. In addition to it, and I'm going to let you know, you don't, you can, you have to open all of the legs, but you do not definitively have to close the legs. The other thing is you don't have to trade 10 contracts. I took a screenshot of 10 contracts. You want a cheating way to do this? You could do one contract, but you could also trade the SPX which would cost you one-tenth the commissions. Pretty interesting, right? Now, this is just a quick glance. It's not, a, not even a great screenshot of the tetrapod spread. What it basically is is profitable when neutral, yet explosive when volatile. Okay? This is not taken directly to expiration, but I want you to see just the general flow. Are there places you can lose money in here? Yes. But this particular risk graph, it's kind of hard to do a risk graph of two different products, okay? And all I'm showing you is just a moment in time where if the market, and, and this is an interesting one because will we profit if we're in a range? Yes, but you also profit. These are not big moves. Here's the, the spiders at 244. The profitability, 
could become wild to the downside almost immediately, like a, a four-point move. That's a 40-point move in the S&Ps. But you start to realize a big move in the spiders could really pay off. So the interesting thing is it has the attributes of an iron condor without the detriment of getting your face completely torn off when you're wrong. Profitable when neutral, yet explosive when volatile. And the trade is specifically designed to make small incremental returns. Everybody always says, how much am I going to make? Okay, listen, how much you're going to make is how much capital you're willing to actually put at risk and so forth. All of the details are forthcoming over here. Remember though, okay, these are some of the characteristics of this tetrapod spread. And again, people are like, what does a tetrapod mean again? If you look up tetrapod, okay, it has to do a lot with evolution. And I, I actually, years ago, I did a degree in molecular genetics. So, you know, theo trade is about evolution. It's about theoretical trade logic. That's what that means. Tetrapod basically means evolving. It has, starts with a lizard and the lizard turns into something bigger. But you have to realize that as a retail client, like if you don't evolve, you die. And the attributes of these tetrapod spreads are undeniable. You know, you don't need to pick market direction. Let me be clear about that. It is most definitely a neutral trade. It is a neutral trade, but it's neutral, profitable in the middle, okay, profitable on the wings. So it's a neutral trade that can benefit. It's a perfect spread to produce risk of a stock portfolio. Because if the market crashes, the trade does profit. Okay? The losses are limited, but the trade continues to profit if the market crashes. You never have to buy any ETF or stock. You are defining your risk. You know what your risk is going in. Your risk is limited to precisely your comfort level. You don't need to use stop orders. It's an excellent tool if you're trying to build a smaller account. Obviously, you're going to do the trade small. This trade right now in a docile market is about very small incremental returns. Okay, and again, that's what the data supports, small incremental returns. But if the market gets volatile, boom, the trade can explode into something much, much bigger, building the tetrapod spread. Now, time out, because everybody's going to get intimidated. You're like, I think I got six, six options over here. Don't let the options intimidate you. One spread below is just being done for a 37 cent debit. You pay 37 cents, the other spread, you're collecting a buck 43. Yeah, actually, these are done as two different trades, okay? But I warn everybody, and I do this like every single like you know session I do. These spreads, this tetrapod spread especially, the best analogy, it's like a chainsaw. You know, you can cut down a tree by going out there and you know using a handsaw. You're probably going to be like you know your forearms are burning after a little while. The quickest way to cut you know through a tree is is going to be a chainsaw. But if you don't know how to use a chainsaw, you're going to cut your fingers off. I mean, it's, it's a great analogy for it. And used correctly, this spread can be, you know, extremely effective in creating turns. Used incorrectly, you're going to cut off a couple of fingers. This one, more than any trade that I've ever presented, is attention to detail. Everything in here is attention to detail. And I, I always say, fear not the tetrapod spread. By the way, I think uh, the name tetrapod is <laughs> it's kind of intimidating. If you don't know options or have limited experience in placing option trades, it's fine, all right? Listen, the details, you know, in the pudding. We can show you how and when to place a tetrapod spread. It's in a matter of a few hours, okay? And what we do here at TheoTrade is we create detailed recipes for every single strategy, including, okay, this tetrapod spread. And it's, it's the same thing. You want to bake a cake, you need a recipe. You want to be able to do, you know, a tetrapod spread, you got to have a recipe. And of course, everybody, well, why does everybody do it? Okay. It's what you need to know. What ETFs? I'll tell you right now what ETFs to do this on. Spiders versus the Qs. That's the best data that I've got so far. How do I determine, all right, the trade and expected move setup? Well, those are key factors, okay? What expiration do I select? What strikes do I use? Position sizing. Position sizing is critical. Do I do one contract in the spiders versus one contract in the queues? Can I have variance? What's the correct probability for the trade? How do I execute the trade? You know, executing the trade, what does that even mean? It means sending the trade. You gotta send the trade eventually, okay? And 
the fun part of it, you know, in executing the trade, as as difficult as that may sound, you eventually have to hit confirm and send. You know, when do you exit? By the way, this trade, no joke, exiting it, that exit of the trade, this is everything. You don't exit, okay? And by the way, you can set a GTC to exit. GTC stands for good till canceled. You have to place the trade by hand, but you don't have to exit it by hand. You can actually good till canceled to buy back the spread that you sold, okay? And then what do you do in a losing position? The losing position is quite entertaining because if you're losing on one position, you're likely gaining on the other. And that's, again, these are the big questions, and that's, that's what we ultimately do here. Criteria! It's what we at Theo Trade do. You know, trading... It's all about answering the what ifs. What might be a good candidate, you know, for the tetrapod spread? As I said, I already gave that one to you. It's the cues the spiders. Correct option cycle, okay? How much capital do you commit? Which strike price? What options do you buy? What options do you sell? Okay? You just ask yourself, what's the right probability for my trade? How many option contracts? Again, when do you close the tetrapod spread? If the market sells off big, now that's an interesting one if the market sells off big because it actually hits a home run. You have to actually know the correct return because the correct return is closing it. The market rallies massively. That's again, good. Can I fix a losing trade? ruh -roh. Can I do this in an IRA or retirement account? Yes, you can do it. And I'm giving you a couple of answers to it. Every answer though, I mean, that's what we do. We have your answers to the trade related questions because we build the recipes. Everything is a checklist. Everything is definitive criteria. Step one, you know, what product you traded on. Step two, what strikes to you? Step three, the probability. Step four, like literally all the answers. How, when, why, at what price? It's just the beginning, though, of the variables you're going to face when both buying and selling the tetrapod spread. You know, the interesting thing, I put buying in here, but it's ultimately both. It's both the buy and sale on the tetrapod spread. And I always say, like, you know, the secret's in the sauce. What is that? You know, hey, I can read about tetrapod spreads. <laughs> if you look up tetrapod, all it's going to show you is a lizard, right? The tetrapod is a name, uh, again, that, that we kind of coined here at Theotrade. But where can you actually learn to do this? And, you know, you can learn to do an iron condor anywhere. Again, there's 5,000 websites, okay? We spent months. And for those of you, if you've, if you've watched a lot of the videos that we've done here at Theotrade, You've seen me talking about expected moves. If you looked on YouTube, you've seen me talk about expected moves, okay, to the point of nauseam, okay? And it's months and months and months of data that we've used. And I've been looking at this idea and this strategy and trying to put it together and trying to put the pieces of the puzzle together. This one has beaten me up beyond belief to be able to build that tetrapod spread and that's I mean what we're actually presenting here is the criteria to the tetrapod spread the class that's coming up we're calling it the secret weapon to trading options on ETFs really the class is the tetrapod spread we didn't call it that why because nobody knows what a tetrapod even is right they don't know what this spread is because it's never been out there before the class it's coming it's June 17th, okay, from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. The class is initially, that's the presentation of the criteria. The class is initially held, it's going to be three hours. Because I'm going to tell you what, you can come to a six-hour class, you're burned. Come on, you're burned after three hours. I like to limit the class to three hours. But then, in everything that I'm doing now, okay, and the class costs 197 bucks, but in everything we're doing, we're adding a full day of live trading. And by the way, that's on a Monday. It's June 19th. It's the Monday after the Saturday. So why do we do it on that Monday? And if you can't watch, it's archived. The class is recorded. It's archived. You have unlimited access to both the class, everything that we do. You can download it, okay, print it out. It's tangible. It's touchable. Um, and when I say download the actual slide deck, you print out the slides because there's a checklist in the slides. The class itself is available, okay, what we call on demand. You just stream it anytime you want with unlimited access. And both of them are recorded because I know some people will make it Saturday. You can't make it Monday. But the reason I think a class like this, it is essential that you have time 
to not only trade live with us, but to do some Q&A. Like, you know, you're going to have questions that are going to come up after a class. Nobody ever answers your emails. We answer emails, okay? But even easier than answer emails, we're going to answer you live. And this, this session, the live trading, it's not just me, Don Kaufman. It's myself. It's Doc Severson. You know, it's Tony Rago is going to help out. Um, you know, Jeff Bierman's actually going to do a section that day. So it's a bunch of us, you know, cohesively and collectively working to make sure that you guys understand this stuff. I am the trade instructor, though, at the class on June 17th. And, you know, Doc could easily teach this, but it's my data, and I'm pretty excited about it. Um, I work my butt off to, to basically build classes like this, but all of us, you know, here at Theotrade work on putting the data together. As added bonuses, listen, these bonuses, I don't even like to use the word bonus so much, you know, bonus number one. It's not about bonuses, okay? These are courses. These are prerequisites. I suggest basics class. If you've never had any basics options, this will take you and ramp you up from the get-go. By the way, you can look at everything. It's theotrade.com forward slash P-O-D. P-O-D stands for pod, right? Tetrapod. So it's theotrade.com forward slash pod. Everything that you're seeing on here is included in it. The options 101 will ramp you up from the absolute basics to the extreme. Then we go to options 201. It's vertical and calendar essentials. Just hear me out for a second. I know many of you have gone to 101. You know, that's, that's a class that we, we put out on the internet. It's a huge array of people that have taken it. If you've never gone through 201, please do it. Even if you're really experienced, do it, okay? Then we go to 301. It's volatility and expected move essentials. Oh, but now, now there's more. There's actually a 401. We took the expected move classes, all right, and I amplified them. It's expected move to the extreme because understanding, okay, the full brunt of what expected moves can do for you is massive by massive. So we just added this one, okay? Last but definitely not least, this is an entire another class. It's iron, we get, we're giving you an iron condors class. Why? Because at the base of this trade is an iron condor. So at the base of the tetrapod spread is the iron condor spread. And I felt it was essential. This is a class that we actually did about a year ago. Why are we putting it in here? Because again, it'll get you ready for the tetrapod spread, okay? Everything is in here. I'm going to answer some questions, all right, on this in just a few minutes. Now, let's continue on over here. The tetrapod class, all right? Again, it's theotrade.com forward slash pod. Here's some of the curriculum. You can use the ETF market instruments, you know, profit from changes in volatility. It's a non-directional, okay, trading strategy. The next thing in the class, we're going to talk about why market efficiency has led us to seek out new ways to produce returns. you got to get on the cutting edge of what's working right now, okay? That's what the tetrapod means. It means evolution. So you're going to learn what the tetrapod spread is, how anyone, if you're a newbie, experienced, you're going to be able to execute these trades. And the newbie, that's why we do the prerequisites. But even if you've had experience, I ask you to do the prerequisites, okay? Build your own tetrapod spread. We're going to give you very detailed step-by-step -step directions. By the way, when I say step-by-step, -step, it literally says step one, step two, step three. And at the end, at the end of all that criteria, I'm now putting like a little Cliff Notes version of it. We're going to give you directions and we're going to give you models. So you have a model trade so that you can actually copy it week after week after week. Um, we're going to give you some insights to reading market risk and expected move. We've done a lot of that today already. How to minimize risk, maximize rewards over here. This is about generating weekly or monthly returns. You do not, per se, have to do this weekly. You could technically do it monthly because the data supports both. I am predominantly going to be talking about weekly. Um, by the way, I love this one. Why predicting market direction right now is for suckers who eventually lose everything. You cannot predict the unforeseen. You can't predict okay, market in terms of standard deviation, you can say we're supposed to move in this range, but anybody that thinks they can predict when you're going to move outside the range, okay, you're talking about tea leaves out there. It's, it's, but that's not essential for the tetrapod spread because you actually profit when you're outside of it. To continue, we're going to show you what strikes and what expiration, when to open, when to close the trades, what market correlations to watch, 
when you actually are actually putting these things on, okay, you need an account, $2,000. Everybody asked that question, so I put it right into the, uh, into the curriculum over here. You know, you could do these trades with $2,000 in your account. And again, right now, which ETFs make the best candidates? It's the spiders and the queues. Again, strike selection, everything is going to be recorded. The live trading is recorded, includes unlimited access of the on-demand recording. That's a little bit about the Tetrapod class. Now, or would you like access to every class we have ever done and access to every class we will do for the next year. So we offer a class for $197, or you have the opportunity to take every class that we've ever done. When I say ever done, since the inception of Theotrade, here's only a small glimpse of some of the classes that we've done. You can have access to everything. It's 997 bucks for the year, and it just gives you access to everything. You can download every single slide deck, everything we've ever done. You know, there's a ton of education out there in the marketplace where you're going to pay $1,000 per class, okay? This is an entire curriculum. It's completely overwhelming. It'll take you months to figure out which class might I want to go to. It won't. And I'm going to tell you why it won't. If you have ever looked at our site, and I'm actually going to show you what our site looks like here momentarily. This is actually a button that says start here in the site. It tells you exactly the curriculum to follow. 101, 201. We take you through, okay, step by step, verbatim. Here's part of the curriculum. After you've gotten through everything on this page, I love this, Crash Course and Option Greeks. Uh, getting risk under control, right? Execution part one, order execution part two, order execution part three. This is awesome. Preparing for your trading day. There is nothing more essential, okay, than where to start. But in addition to it, when I say you have access to everything, okay, I mean everything. Here are some of the classes. You want to learn about selling premium managing risk. You want to learn about covered calls. You want to learn about here, this is one of the classes I just recently did, intraday strategies and setups. Now, there's the risk twist class, you name it, because a lot of you guys have been to different webinars and respect the fact the entire thing is $997. Now, I'm going to answer a couple of questions over here, but I want to show you what this page looks like, okay? And of course, the address, theotrade.com forward slash POD, okay? Anyone, I want to make this clear now, any of you that enroll for this class, any of you that enroll for this class, even at the $197, okay, we will, if you have a TD Ameritrade account, okay, we will allow you the commission discount because this is a multiple leg strategy. We feel very, very strongly about that. If you do not have a TD Ameritrade account and you would like one, we will gladly provide you a link to do so. Okay? If you ask, we will also tell you what that deal happens to be. Okay? So feel free, you know, question. I cannot mention it live on here, but we're feverishly posting it into the chat room. It is worth it alone to take the class for a commission discount because the discount is quite dramatic. Nevertheless, don't take the class for that. Take the class because if you want to learn to sell premium in a marketplace that's become incredibly efficient, do it. Um, again, the web address, theotrade.com forward slash POD. It's again, theotrade.com forward slash POD. You can also email support at theotrade.com. This is also our 800 number. But down here it says, we are here. You can actually go in and start and initiate a live chat with us as well. Now, I want to go through a couple things in this class, the secret weapon to trading options on ETFs. Okay, again, we went through in detail all, okay, the variations and all the curriculum that's going to be covered. What I didn't go into in detail is what we call total Theo. And that's for 997. Again, you know, you go, you go to other classes. You know, one class is going to cost you $997. When you're a member of Theotrade, everything is included. We don't charge more for different studies, okay? We don't, I'm sorry, I'm clicking on things feverishly over here. 
We don't charge more for different studies out there. Okay. We don't play these games. What we ultimately do is we do everything from email trades out to you. Okay. We have a full class curriculum that we walk you through. We have a live trading room every day. All of this is $997 for the year. The live trading room is part of it. If you can't be in the live trading room every day, that's fine. Sorry, I know I'm flashing over here. But if you can't be in the live trading room, that's fine. All right. But again, we email out trades to you because you can't be live. All right. We do one class per month minimum. Again, a class per month minimum. Lately, we've actually been averaging two classes per month. If you need studies or scans, it's included. Okay. If you need, again, real-time trade examples, it's included. We email you. If you need archives, every word we ever say is included. If you want to talk to other, you know, traders out there, it's part of it. Okay. And when I say other traders, you're like, I don't even know what that means. What, what, what other traders? So if you want to talk to other traders, they're in the chat room right now. This is live. Okay. And I'm going to freeze it so it doesn't flash because I've got too much ultimately on my screen. But, um, okay. Um, <laughs> there's a bunch of people talking right now in the chat room over here. So I do, uh, I do apologize. Anyway, all of this is part of Theotrade. And I'm sorry if it's flashing. I've just got too many screens open right now. That's what Theotrade is about. Every archive, okay, every class, you name it, it's all encompassing, okay? However, at the same time, you know, I digress. I want everybody at the very minimum to learn how to sell premium efficiently yet safely, and that's what this Tetrapod class happens to be about. Let me answer a couple of questions because there's some questions that are, in fact, coming in over here. Uh, and again, so let's, let's look at some of the questions. Number one. Alex, Let's see if I can't grab this. Um, okay, <laughs> Frank, Frank B. That is awesome. All right. So, Alex, I can never get my head wrapped around options. All right. Am I going to be able to follow along with the class? Once again, I don't want to digress too much, but yeah. And that question came in a while ago. Absolutely, you're going to get your head wrapped around this class because. We're doing all the prerequisites, and I'll, I'll reference these prereqs once again as I, uh, as I kind of scroll down. Sorry about that. As I kind of scroll down, the prereqs were all the bonuses over here. This is designed specifically so that you get your head wrapped around options, okay? And if you've never listened to the 101, the 201, the 301, okay, this is not going to take extensive time. You have, between now and the 17th, yeah, the class is live on the 17th, but everything is archived, okay? Everything is archived. And again, we are doing the discounted TD Ameritrade rate for this particular class, which is unusual, okay? But the class has multiple legs to it, you know, meaning that the, the class and the spread has multiple legs. We're trying to save everybody money. I think you'll have no problem, Alex, wrapping your head around options in here. And, if, you know, if you need help, that's what we're here for. You know, you can email us. This, this class is not just like wham, bam, you know, you're on your own. It's about support. That's why we're even doing, you know, the live trading day. And don't forget, okay, the class isn't just three hours and get out. The class is three hours. Then we're going to be together for a full six-hour trading day. It's six and a half hours. We're going to break for lunch for about an hour and a half. But, again, it's a long, long day. All right. The next question comes from, uh, looks like, Jill? Jill. I lost a lot of money trading and I found it hard to pull the trigger now. Is this class going to help? Well, a lot of people, and, and again, correct me if I'm wrong, because Jill, we can interact on here, you know, you can write in, but a lot of people, the way they're losing money in markets is they're going out and they're doing things like iron condors and they're making money, making money, make money, get smacked in the face. And then, then, and only then, they find it very, very difficult to be able to pull the trigger. Or they're going out there and buying a call, buying a put, just trying to hit a home run. You're going to find that an impossibility to be sustained. So by all means, okay, I, I get it. I totally get it. And I think this class is going to help extensively, in essence, being able to, uh, to pull, the, uh, pull the trigger out there. So uh, by the way, I want to thank everybody. There's a, there's a bunch of people. If you guys want to see uh, comments in the Theotrade chat room, 
So bear with me here momentarily. I'll show you a couple of comments in the Theotrade chat room. All right, everybody's pumped up for the class. So uh, cool. I'm, uh, I'm excited about this one too. The Tetrapod class is, this is, you know, in terms of the classes we've done in the last year, this one's, it's up there. I, uh, again, a lot of time, a lot of effort in it. So Jill, I hope that that helps. It will help you pull the trigger. The other thing, I try to go extensive, extensive detail into, uh, again, into ultimately how you pull the trigger. And that basically means how you execute these trades. So, um, next, Omar, I don't have that much time to trade. All right, can I do this? Yeah, use GTC orders. Good till canceled. So the one thing, Omar, I'm going to tell you, you do have to open the trades, okay? And that can be done. There's a window of opportunity to be able to open the trades. Um, closing the trade, however, can be considered a good till canceled orders. And, and you can even set alerts for a lot of this. So if you don't have a lot of time, you're on mobile, it's easy, okay? Easy, easy stuff over there. Um, to set good to canceled. I will cover that, all right? By the way, somebody said you're traveling during the dates shown. Totally get it. A lot of people are. It's fine. Just, you know, you can hop in and you can listen to the archive of it. Like, do I want everybody there live? Yeah, absolutely. Because there's, you know, even like tonight, there's interacting with me and so forth. But if you're not there live, you go to the recording, you send us an email after, whether it's myself or Doc Severson or Jeff Bierman or, you know, any of us can answer questions on this stuff. So everybody's fully versed right now in the tetrapod spread. Next, Casey. Oh, I love this one. I can't get approved for options because I'm a newbie. Uh, our class, our class is here at Theotrade. This is extremely important. The classes here at Theotrade are accepted as experience and prerequisites for getting options approval. How many other education firms are going to tell you that? However, there is a one big however. You have to go through 101, 201, and 301 for it to count as experience. You have to go through 101, 201, and 301. You're supposed to have to listen to it. Now, let's talk on the side over here for a second. If I go to bat for you and get you an option account, you better watch this stuff because they're going to give you approval. Um, Again, very few firms have that. Uh, I ran the education division of TD Ameritrade. We have trust. <laughs> they trust that we will educate correctly. Um, Doc, another question over here. And this question comes from another Don. I like it. Is this trade considered market neutral? It absolutely is considered a market neutral. But the interesting thing about the trade, it makes money in a tight range, it can make money in a very explosive range. It's actually market neutral in a multitude of ways. And that's that's what it's about. So, all right, another question, can you do this in a retirement account? Of course you could do it in a retirement account, no problem whatsoever. IRA, yes. Retirement account, yes, okay? You do have to have options approval. And I, I've seen multiple questions about the, uh, the IRAs over there. So, um, by the way, I love I love one of the comments in here so much that I'm actually going to pull our uh, our site back up over here. So I really appreciate. It. I know you guys are firing comments in. By the way, nobody in here is a uh, nobody in here is paid to put comments in here. And this this is the live chat room right now. Like we're broadcasting this. So and these are all people that are members of Theo Trade. So every okay. Everybody that's in this chat room live right now is already a member of Theotrade. That's this chat room over here. Um, okay. Uh, by the way, the, uh, the Tetrapod class is the ETF class. The Tetrapod class, Robert, is the ETF class. So I already got your IRA question over here. As a member, it's well worth the buy. You learn more about trading, working with Thinkorswim. Great program. Thank you, Norman. And Norman's not somebody that normally comes into the chat room. I don't, uh, okay, I don't uh, recall seeing you too often in there. Nat's well worth the dollars. Been a member for six months, uh, making your money back. Awesome. So I really appreciate all the uh, all the feedback over here. And again, I'm going to try to answer a few more questions, and we're just about ready to call it a night over here. Again, the uh, the address is theotrade.com/pod. Um, 
and I really I hope to see every one of you guys at the uh, at the course over here. By the way, we can help you out in Singapore if you're in Singapore. We got your back over there. I uh, I actually helped open the Singapore TD Ameritrade office back in 2008 and 2009. So one of my closest friends uh, is now running the TD Ameritrade Singapore office. So absolutely. Again, I want to thank everybody for joining us tonight. And uh, again, I hope to see you. I mean, if you're, you can jump in here the one year and you could be in the chat room tomorrow because tomorrow we're actually going to be talking a little bit about this already in the chat room. So, you know, do what you have to, come to the class. Uh, I appreciate all the support out there. Thanks everybody for joining us tonight here at Theotrade. Have a wonderful evening. Bye-bye.